Hey, I'm Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and today I'm going to break down Achilles tendonitis, give you three main causes from my experience working with people in pain for the last 10 years, and I'm going to give you a couple things you can do right away to see if it can improve or eliminate your Achilles tendonitis pain. So I decided to do this video because I have a couple of new in-person clients here in Marin and this is my brand new office. I'm super excited to be here and two of my new clients both have Achilles tendonitis and then I got a message from somebody also saying they had just been diagnosed or figured out they have Achilles tendonitis. So uh, I wanted to come share with you from my perspective a very surprising cause that I've kind of figured out, especially in you runners, or if you do a lot of like uphill hiking or backpacking, that kind of thing. So we have three main causes from my perspective um, for Achilles tendonitis. Number one is going to be a pretty simple cause. Now, if you fall into this category, you're gonna be able to eliminate it pretty darn quickly. And that's gonna be just super restricted calf fascia upstream of the Achilles, causing irritation, lack of blood flow, you know, it's pulling on that Achilles. So what I'm talking about is all of this upper and mid calf fascia can get super restricted. Like if I ball my pants up here, you can see it pulls on the lower part of my leg, which is where that Achilles tendon is. And that's just gonna cause, you know, like I said, irritation, a lack of blood flow. Uh, and if you get any kind of like micro tears or a slight tear in the Achilles tendon itself, a lack of blood flow is gonna be the number one thing that will stop it from healing. So that's the most common form that I see, but there's another one that's actually surprisingly common. Uh, and I don't hear anyone else really talking about this cause and that is a reciprocal inhibition relationship between the Achilles tendon and uh, your tibialis anterior or your perineals, which are these, the shin muscles right here. Uh, the very front one is your tibialis anterior, your perineals are here. So I have a video on reciprocal inhibition. I'm not gonna go super in depth in this video, but we'll link to it in the description below for you if you wanna check that out. But reciprocal inhibition just describes the relationship between two opposing muscle groups where one inhibits the other. Uh, and the best example I have to show you would be in order to contract my hamstring, my quad has to stretch. So in order to contract my quad, my hamstring has to stretch. So where Achilles tendonitis is concerned, the tibialis anterior has to stretch for the Achilles tendon to contract. So yes, it's a tendon, but it actually needs to contract and it's a powerful um, force, uh, you know, it, it propels us forward basically through things like running, um, especially if you're trying to push off. Um, so if that Achilles can't contract like it needs to, to propel you forward, it could be because the tibialis anterior is too tight to allow that movement. So this is where a little bit of brain body comes in because your brain is always going to try to protect you and it would rather have you, you know, not tear a muscle than actually continue running. So it might ping you actually in the Achilles tendon um, area with pain or a slight tear or something happening there. But the problem is sometimes on the front. Um, so I've seen this in people who do a lot of uphill hiking or a lot of backpacking. Uh, or if they are like an ultra runner and they're doing a lot of hills. So what are you doing when you're doing a lot of hills? You're contracting your tibialis anterior to go uphill, right? Or maybe you're even in a boot that's kind of forcing you into a bit of um, tibialis anterior contraction and you're not getting as much um, calf contraction. You're not pushing off as much if you don't have a bendy shoe. So I hope you're following, um, but that is actually, that's been a common cause of Achilles tendonitis, and it was with both of these two clients of mine. So I wanted to get this out to you, this information, because I think it's probably a pretty common cause that most people aren't looking at. So I'm gonna give you a technique for that as well um, in just a moment, but right now I wanna talk about the third cause of Achilles tendonitis. And if you fall into this third category, you might start seeing things like um, noticeable inflammation that almost looks like a bunion on your heel or in that Achilles tendon where it starts to bump out. Um, or you might actually have thickening of your plantar fascia tendon, which is down here, um, with or without the presence of plantar fasciitis. 
Um, so you might have plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis, and that is probably a sure sign you're suffering from this third category. Uh, and that is restricted fascia that's um, basically dehydrated and brittle in your, maybe your entire lower body, but definitely from the calves down. So fascia is meant to be lubricated, um, elastic, fluid, able to absorb impact. So it's meant to be our shock absorption system through things like running or hiking or even standing barefoot. And if you're doing a lot of these activities and you're not actually getting your fascia to that youthful fluid state in between your activities, and you're actually going into those activities with brittle fascia that's dehydrated. And when I say hydrated or dehydrated, I don't necessarily mean water, The water is super important. I actually mean blood flow. So we need blood to be flowing and we have more blood within the fascial system than muscle fiber. So if your fascial system is super restricted, you're not gonna have blood flowing through your body, able to nourish your cells and repair them. So you're gonna end up feeling that impact, whether it's again, standing barefoot, running, hiking, um, impact, any impact sport, right? Or heavy weightlifting or anything like that. Um, and you're gonna basically feel the impact through your feet, through your ankles and up to your knees. And what's gonna take the hit is of that impact is actually that fascial system. So it's trying to do its job of absorbing the impact for you, but it can't. And because it's brittle, it's now more prone to um, inflammation perhaps or tearing. So if, you, if your brain recognizes that you're in danger of tearing, it's going to ping you with a pain signal in the area that is endangered. Now it doesn't tell you what's wrong, where the pain is, is almost never the problem, I like to say. Um, so if you fall into this third category, you're gonna wanna go after your calf fascia, your tibialis anterior fascia, your perineal fascia, your soleus fascia, your plantar fascia, um, and maybe even all the way upstream into your hamstrings and your quads um, and all of it. So if you think you fall into this category, don't despair. I actually want you to realize this is good news. You can totally reverse the age of your fascia in your, to in your entire lower body. And you're gonna wanna start with that lower calf compartment. And then as that gets healthier and better, or if you have time, you're gonna work your way up and do all of it. Because I want you to not just sort of get to neutral and not have that Achilles pain anymore. Because if you're gonna go do those things like running or standing or impact sports again, if you don't optimize your fascia and actually take care of that whole lower body, it's gonna come back. And actually all of you should be doing this anyway, including me preaching to the choir here, uh, because you're gonna be a more effective athlete, a more effective mover. You're gonna have fluid fascia in your lower body and you're just gonna feel better doing your sports and you're not gonna have pain. show you the two um, main things that you can do if you fall into these categories um, and then we'll link to some of the other techniques in the description below that I'm not going to show you in this particular video because I already have the techniques elsewhere. Um, so the first is going to use a, a lacrosse ball and I like the lacrosse ball because it is a little grippy. Um, it's not slick or slippery like some balls. A golf ball is not going to work too well for this. A tennis ball is going to be too soft. <laughs> Um, but you could use like a yoga tune-up ball would be fine, although they're a little softer than the lacrosse ball. Um, and we're gonna target that tibialis anterior right here. So I'm actually gonna put, just put the ball on the chair and then I'm gonna line up that meaty part. This, I don't know if you can see it on me, it's pretty pronounced. <laughs> um, the meaty part of that tibialis anterior, not your shin bone, so I do not want you smashing this ball into your tibia, uh, your bone here. Uh, that's not gonna feel good. Uh, so you wanna make sure it's on the meat of your muscle. And then you're just gonna lean your weight into it and then do some pointing and flexing of your foot. And I'm stabilizing that ball with my hand. You wanna make sure to do that because otherwise it's gonna pop out like that. So I'm stabilizing, pointing, flexing, and then I might do some circles just exploring and let's say I'm like right here and ooh that's pretty good so I could go back and forth spend 20 to 30 seconds per spot but then you want to move down a little bit and point 
and flex, and that's a good spot on me. Point flex, and then again, maybe some circles or some little back and forth if you find a good spot. But the best one's really gonna be that pointing and flexing. And then again, you'll go down again. So you might find three, four, five, six spots. It's gonna be individual to you. You can go as far down as there's still meat there. And on some of you ultra runners, if you're built a little bit like me and you do a lot of hills, um, you're going to have spots all the way down more than likely. Um, and this middle part is often what's inhibiting the Achilles. Uh, so I can kind of hear some of you maybe <laughs> wondering right now, aren't you gonna show me how to release my Achilles? And no, I'm not actually, because usually that's not the problem. However, this next technique is gonna get close to it because sometimes there's actually just some restricted fascia close to the Achilles, just upstream in the soleus and gastrocnemius. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so your mission here is to find all of the restricted tight fascia in your calf, starting way up high and working your way down kind of to right about there. So I don't necessarily want you going into the Achilles, that might make it a little bit worse, but I do want you to explore right here, this part of where the gastrocnemius ends, the soleus is kind of um, hanging out right there underneath the gastrocnemius muscle. Um, and what you're looking for is areas of tenderness or soreness or intensity when you add weight. Now, if you're familiar with me and my methods, um, you might actually already know this technique. I've shown it to you before. Um, and you could definitely swap out uh, the rolling pin technique I'm about to show you for any of the foam roller techniques that I have, but this is gonna be a little bit more targeted. And in the case of Achilles tendonitis, you have to find the adhesions uh, in your calf that are pulling on the Achilles. That's one of the main um, contributors to pain, Achilles pain in my experience. Um, and this is gonna allow you to find those adhesions and actually release them a lot better. Okay, so the cool thing about this uh, rolling pin is I can angle it to the outside, I can angle it to the inside or come straight down. Now, most of the time I like to come straight down on my calf, but I might need to like grab that knot there. Now, right now I'm kind of clunking it side to side. Um, the point of this technique is not to use the roller and manipulate or massage it. It's to find the adhesion, pin it to the bone, and then point and flex, and then draw some circles to release it between the rolling pin and the bone. So we're actually gonna go some like back and forth, circling. If I find a really good spot like I just found, I'm gonna go back and forth because I want to get it. <laughs> now you can stay on there 20 to 30 seconds or a little bit more if you want. And then you're gonna just move down like an inch and point and flex. Um, same thing. Now down here, the adhesion is gonna be less on the outside probably and more right there on the inside middle part of your calf. And same thing, pointing, flexing. Now you might want to shift there. So <laughs> um, I'm a really good example of the adhesion being on the inside of the calf. So you can probably see how my leg wants to roll inward. I need to either shift me out, like my hip, my butt out, in order to grab it, or I could do both, what I just said, and use the rolling pin to kind of um, drag it over. So now I have a clunk. Boom. So that spot right there, if you can find that spot, it's gonna be so good. And here's another clue for you. If you are somebody who rolls your ankles a lot, that spot is indicative of why, or it's a symptom of having rolled them before. So that tissue or that fascia gets stuck in a ball and then it actually pulls the outer part of your ankle um, into a stretch and the inner part into that roll position. Um, and you might have that first and then later, even years later, end up with something like Achilles tendonitis. That's gonna manifest differently for different people, but more than likely if you're someone who has rolled ankles before and now you have Achilles tendonitis, you're gonna have something in that spot. So there you have it, uh, two really good techniques. So I hope that made sense. Figure out which category you think you're in 
and then do the appropriate one. So just to recap here, if you think you're in category one, you're gonna wanna go after that calf fascia that I just showed you and then walk around, see how your Achilles feels. And if it only hurts you when you're you know, running or after a run or hiking or something like that, then I would do some self discovery here and be your own scientist and do one thing at a time. That way you know what works. So do only the calf one, for example, and then go for a run and see if your Achilles is better. Um, if you think you're in category two, because you do a lot of uphill hiking or running, you're an ultra runner, or maybe just a runner in general, or maybe you know you have a gait where you're always pulling your feet up and running like that instead of pushing off the ball of your toe, uh, then definitely go after your tibialis anterior and maybe only do that and then do your activity and see if it's better. Now, if it's not better, you would try the one you didn't do um, because, you know, there's no straight arrow, straight shot for everybody here. We're all a little bit different. Um, and then if you think you're in category three, um, fascial release is gonna be super intense <laughs> for you in your lower calf, calf compartment if you're in category three. It's gonna feel brittle, dehydrated, stringy, like guitar strings in there. Um, and you're gonna wanna optimize as much fascia as you can. So if you think you're in that category, just kind of go after everything and then try running and see how you feel. So I'd love for you to try this out. Uh, and if you don't have some of these tools, we'll link to other techniques that I have because uh, we have foam roller techniques for the calf. And then I do have another tibialis anterior technique that's pretty good if you're in a gym and you have access to a weight plate. So we'll link to that as well. I'd love for you to share your experience below if you do try this so you can inspire someone else to do the same and get a result for themselves. And if you're new here, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and maybe give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Come talk to me in the comments. I'll see you there and I'll see you next time.